What we do is what we believe. And in that moment, I began to realize at the end of the day, as long as there's breath in my lungs, there's hope in our hearts, and giving up's not an option. You and I and we, no matter what your unique situation, your storm, your struggle, your trauma, your abuse, your wounds, your scars, no matter what they are, and I know we've all got them on some way, some way, somehow, some level, whatever they are, I promise you this, you are not a product of your past, you are not a product of your environment or your current unique situation, but you are always a product of how do we navigate through our storm. What we do is what we believe. And in that moment, instead of giving up, I literally wrote the words, change the world. Literally, I wrote these words, change the world. And I slapped them and I put them on the prison wall in my cell. And I began to realize something. First and foremost, the mask that I wore that was supposed to keep me safe, it was the very thing that held me hostage and paralyzed me. And I, I wore the mask and I tried to protect and I isolated and isolating and letting nobody in. It got me to a place of brokenness. And I decided in that moment, I was done wearing that stupid mask. I was done being afraid of showing people my scars, my hurts, my pains, my wounds. And yet that's a fearful thing because I don't know what others are going to do with when I begin to talk and to communicate. But I realized what was going to happen if I continued to wear the mask, man. Nothing ever changes unless we change. The mask doesn't keep you safe. It, it holds you hostage, y'all. But you know what I also had to realize? I was allowing things that I couldn't control to control me. You see, growing up, I blamed everything on my dad. I blamed everything on him. He was the reason that I skipped school. He was the reason for my attitude. He was the reason that I, I, I went to drugs. He was the reason for my suicidal thoughts. He was the reason for every destructive behavior. Like, I blamed everything on him being ripped out of my life. But you know what I had did? I had walked into this trap. I was allowing things that I couldn't control. Those situations that you didn't sign up for, you didn't want to have to deal with, it knocked, it came in front of you, and I allowed that thing that I had no say over, I allowed that to control me for so long. I was allowing things that I couldn't control to control me and I had to realize I had to take control of what I can only control I can't control what you think what you say or how you treat me I can't always control the situations the struggles the adversities the abuses the hurts the pains that other have caused me but I can always re I can always control how I react how I respond and what I do I had to take control of me control what you can control and truthfully the first thing that I had to do which was the most difficult thing that I had to do I had to realize the anger the rage the hurt the frustration the pain that I had towards my dad I had to let it go and I was scared to let it go because I had had so much identity tied up in my wounds but I had to learn I am more than my struggle I am more than my wound I have to let it go letting it go and forgiving him didn't justify it didn't make it right for him but if a family could forgive me for taking the life of their daughter how could I continue to understand this that the anger the frustration the madness the pain that I had towards my dad it was only poisoning me and I had to let some things go and that's a challenge because for so long that pain, that wound, it really became like a safety net for me because it was my go-to. It was my reason for all of my struggles. And if I let it go, then I had to begin to face some of my other hurts and my pains. And that's intimidating and it's scary. But the truth is, when we hold on to these things, it's not poisoning the people who did it to us. It's only holding you hostage. And so, I let it go. It didn't justify it. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't mean that me and my dad became best of best of buddies. But it allowed me to begin to continue to pursue purpose. And we all got a purpose. Every one of you in this room, you were born to leave your fingerprints on history. Every one of you in this room were born to not just exist, but to experience life. But until you let go of some of the things that you've allowed to define you for so long, you know why? 
Sometimes we can't change and we can't overcome the suicidal thoughts, the self-injuring mentality, our anger, our rage, our wounds, because all you have been doing for so long, you're consumed by it. All you do is focus on it. It's everything about you and what you feed and what you focus on, what you feed grows and what you focus on magnifies. And I realized if I stopped being consumed about that, but found the courage to let it go and stop being self-absorbed, but begin to walk even while I was still wounded, begin to move towards my dream. And I realized what I give away, I get to keep. And I started looking to my friends, my peers, my community of other people with storms and struggles. And I began to recognize what gave me real worth, real passion, what helped me really overcome is this, giving what you give away, you get to keep. When I started having empathy towards my friends, being of somebody that would listen, getting involved in other people's situations and helping them. Why does that help me? Because it took my eyes off my struggle and it put my eyes on beginning to help others. And when I helped others, it gave me real self-worth, real self-value. What you give away, you get to keep.